Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Africa's Weekly, episode 18, with our artist Carolina. Carolina, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, you know, you're an incredibly talented artist, and we're really excited to kind of give our audience a deeper dive into, you know, you and some of your artwork. Thank you so much for inviting me, and I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so Carolina, we'd love to know a little bit more about your background um, and your story as an artist and um, some of the stuff that means a lot to you when uh, you're creating your work. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm originally from Poland um, I spent 10 years in Manchester and I went to art school in Manchester. That's where I got my degree in England. And then I moved to Spain. So currently I live in Valencia in Spain. And uh, I mainly and I think only do uh, oil paintings. Mm, and I graduated university about like seven years ago. And it's been a journey for that last seven years of um, on and off uh, nine to five job and then being a full time artist and then thinking that it's not really a good choice to be an artist, so I'm going to do something else. But all in all, uh, at the end, this is where I am. So I'm a full-time artist, full-time painter now. Um, and I think this theme of uh, relocation, um, moving around, uh, being in a different um, places, uh, starting from my life from the beginning, gave me an idea of looking at the objects that I carry with me um, as the theme of my of my artworks so my paintings are based around the objects that i find i either found on the street or that are meaningful for me or are um symbols of memories for other people as well yeah and these themes of finding symbolic imagery like you're just describing in your work has that been something you've always done from the beginning or is that something you kind of fostered and found um, while you were developing your work? I think, I think, I think this is a great question. I think, um, I think I've been like that from the beginning. And I do think that being an artist is something that starts at the beginning, not by, you know, drawing or painting or doing things is the certain kind of, um, sensitivity and personality that you have and whether as a child you know how to deal with it and um, how to grow up with it uh, and I've been very melancholic nostalgic child always uh, collecting things and creating these memories and these stories in my head about them and um, always keeping some kind of like treasures just for myself you know you have this idea of keeping boxes under your bed where you collect things. Yeah, that that is pretty common, but that was me as well. Um, and I think um, the, that interest also comes from uh, loneliness, feeling feeling very lonely you know, when you kind of search of search for uh, familiarity or the warmth or the comfort, uh, going through the things that you have or things that you know. Um, when you move around and then you change the, the circumstances and you're far away from your family or friends or when it's not that easy to start in a country where nobody speaks your language, uh, th these, are the, these are the moments when I lean to these, these objects. And for example, I look for them, you know, I, I can walk on the street and feel sad or, or lonely or angry. And then I see something that reminds me of something. It's, you know, piece of paper or, or God knows what, really. And, and immediately I have a warmth in my heart or I have this memory or, or a story in my head that, uh, that connects me to it. So would you say your work is really trying to capture the positive feelings that those physical objects actually represent to you? I would say, is there uh, is there anything really only positive about painting? Because I think that all of it is just about, you know, sometimes sadness and everything that we sure. struggle with. I think a lot of artists would say that. Okay. Um, no, but 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 yes, that this is the um, 
I think yes, it's about positivity because even if I if I don't um, create a painting about a specific memory for me, it's often a, a memory of a certain times in pop culture, you know, that the memory that was uh, the same for all of us in a certain age and it brings back the childhood and and it is something that, you know, oh, it was great, I remember this, I remember this, yeah. oh, I used to have it, I had it in my in my home and 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 all of that it is connected to happy memories also when i um think about my old home my grandma's home this is all you know this this is all happy places really absolutely do you think that the symbolism and the physical objects that you're capturing in your work changes from the memories of different locations since you've lived in quite a few places So I think that, oh, it's a complex question. It's an interesting one. So I think the actual object is the same. It always okay. brings me back to the same moment, to the same place. But with the different circumstances I'm in, um, maybe it brings back slightly different, no, maybe it responds to a different, uh, different feeling. You know, if I think about um, a carpet, for example, the carpet that my grandma used to have, it's always the same carpet. But because I think about this carpet when I'm in Manchester dealing with a heartbreak, you know, or I'm in Valencia thinking about something else, it's the same memory, but it comes to me in different circumstances. So it I is see. kind of interesting to see what that really corresponds to. Yeah. yeah. Um, something that I was reading that you said that I wanted to ask about and thought was really cool was an interview you were talking about your journey from business school to becoming an art student and kind of how changing your, you know, let's say friend group or what you want to do in life kind of led you to that lonely chapter and it said it allowed you to um, you said it allowed you to become friends with loneliness. I kind of just wanted to touch on, you know, what that means to you to become friends with loneliness and kind of how you were able to do that kind of changing um, a chapter in your life and kind of changing the whole environment of your life. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for the question. Um, I think just to start with, I've always been a very lonely child, even it's not in a bad way. It's not in a bad way. I didn't have a horrible childhood, quite the opposite. But I was an only child for a very long time. And um, I was very um, used to being alone. Um, I grew up in Poland and both of my parents are um, business school graduates. So it's not the country in the times when I was uh, I was finishing high school, for example. Nobody was encouraging anybody to do art it was more like you know get a real degree um so my parents also encouraged me to do business school and back then it felt like well okay then you know i'm gonna get a normal job i'm gonna get a salary i'm gonna do business school and then maybe i will get to paint or do something else and i got into this business school and it was horrible i mean it was great. I met a lot of people, and but I've never felt I never felt so disconnected in my life. I almost felt like I'm sitting in a in a classroom uh, between students that really want to be here. They really want to be here. They really have goals. They are really passionate about this, and I completely don't care. I I can't. You know, I just what am I doing here? What am I even doing here? And it was horrible because, you know, my parents really wanted me to finish and I wanted to graduate. And they were like, okay, so we we are providing your lifestyle. You need to finish the school. Um, and I started talking about it, you know, to my friends. Oh, because I like drawing and, and I'm, I'm doing this and I'm interested in movies and, and music. And they were like, Oh yeah, you look like an artist, but nobody took me seriously. And um, they were like, okay, but you know, when I started 
talking like going to an art school and maybe dropping out of business school. They were like, oh, this is a really bad decision. And I did genuinely feel like a loser. I felt like a biggest loser in the world, you know, um, in front of my parents and my family and all of the other students that were like pushing for these corporate jobs. And I was like, I felt just different. And back then, nobody in my circle really understood me. But I've done it. And they were all criticizing me. And I was very um, sensitive about it. I really let other people's wor words um, affect me, destroy me. And I felt, okay, if I, if I went this far, I need to break it all. It's, it's going to be a, a <laughs> big breakup with the city, with the country, with the friends, with everyone. I'm doing my own thing. That's it. I'm leaving everyone behind. Mm, and this is when I felt the most lonely. And this is when I felt like I really need to start <laughs> from the beginning. And yeah. as much as I understand and love my parents and everything they've done for me and for my brother, mm, uh, we also didn't talk for a very long time. That That was a decision... I think not even the decision, my parents were, uh, they needed time to adjust to the way I handled that decision and the way I informed them about it. But I really, really was alone, not even, you know, speaking to my parents. So um, I do believe that this ex experience, this loneliness brought a lot. Um, and I really had, I've had time to really... Um, spend time with myself and, and and really think about my emotions and the feelings and everything that I'm going through. Um, years after that, I also had to do uh, loads of therapy. Mm. So now I can talk about it. Now I can understand it and see, see it as a very inspiring, fruitful um, experience. But that loneliness back then was, uh, was very difficult. It was difficult. I really like that expression of a breakup between those those elements of your life. That's there's no better way to describe that. Um, would you say those emotions that uh, were fostered from that experience show up in your work? They show up in my process, and I really want to uh, touch up on that because um, it took me a while to paint like a confident painter. painter, And I think I wish people more um, talked about it more because, because I felt like a loser and I was so lonely and I felt like I disappointed so many people and like I really created the stories in my head. Everyone thinks I'm a failure. I didn't have confidence to paint and I didn't really have confidence to acknowledge what is it that I'm looking for in painting. It was more like, okay, so these paintings work for this artist and they're successful, so I'm going to maybe go this way or I'm going to apply for this because that, you know, was successful for someone. I was really, really insecure because of that, because I lost everyone and everything and I had to redefine myself. It's also not easy when you go from being this... Mm, a business school child that sort of sees the future ahead already to suddenly being an artist you know it's a completely different world completely yeah. different emotions and the people in this world have different kind of um, values and sensitivity like I mentioned before so it it is showing in my process in this part of me being really insecure and feeling like Oh, I'm just a beginner and they're real artists. And in terms of the actual paintings um, as outcomes, so the ready paintings, um, yeah, I feel I feel as as well because it's 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 all about these memories and feeling disconnected and trying to fit in the same way as I'm trying to make my objects fit in into the scenarios or the compositions that I put them in. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so important for everyone going through, you know, any sort of change or trying to become better in any way to hear these things that you're saying, you know, everyone's going to go through that lonely chapter and you kind of have to, if you want to become great at something. And, you know, another thing I read you say was 
you look back on, so when you, you know, became a full-time artist or started going to art school, all you did was paint and it was a grind, you know, it's all you thought about, all you did. And at the time it was hard, but now you look back on that experience with nostalgia. Um, and I think that's just a great way that, you know, people who are in that right now should look back or should look at, you know, their current circumstances. Like, yeah, right now, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if I made the right decision, but these are the times that I'll look back on and, you know, feel grateful for. Uh, yeah, but I, I just need to point out personally for me, the most important thing, it's great to talk about it right now. And it's great to see it with nostalgia. However, I went through therapy and I really had to look for professional help, work with a psychologist really to get to the point where I can talk about it and see it with nostalgia. Uh, and I am happy and proud of that, everything that I went through. And it, it's like you said, it's, it was incre it was crucial moment. It was mm. a crucial moment. However, back then, um, I remember, um, when we've had a, um, I don't know, Christmas breaks in art schools. I used to break into art school. Should I be saying that? Oh, well, anyway, I used to break in through basement. Mm, I used to make the cleaners open doors for me. And, and I know, I think that I, that my tutor knew about it and he let me do it because I think I've never talked to him about it, but I think he knew that I'm going to break, that I'm going to burn myself out and and he knew that this is the experience that i have to have but i also failed in other subjects like i don't know i felt like what is the point of me writing essays you you are all just wasting my time i'm just here to paint <laughs> so i was painting non-stop non-stop it was really really bad and then after that i really had a meltdown breakdown uh, uh, and 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 I started the journey with psychotherapy and uh, professional help, which uh, I'm very grateful for. And I think that speaks to both your resilience and perseverance, both as an individual and an artist. Yeah. I mean, that's really incredible, that story. And also the fact that you did become such a confident individual and and artists in itself. I mean, the work reflects that. You can see, you can see it in the work where um, you really see the whole, uh, the emotion and the intention and the themes of it when you look at your work, which um, is really moving for the viewer, but I'm sure for yourself as well. It is, of course. Yeah, there are paintings that that really. And bring out emotions that are sometimes even um, uncomfortable, but yeah. they are there. And I think that my biggest accomplishments in painting and in adulthood, just to sound a bit old, is that for a very long time, I was ashamed of a lot of things, you know. I was ashamed of dropping out of uh, business school without a degree. I was ashamed of... Um, becoming crazy in art school because I was actually called crazy, and and I felt like I did I've, I've done everything wrong. You know, I'm so yeah. ashamed of it. There was a lot of shame. It's a horrible feeling. Um, but I own this story. This is my story. It's like, hey, I've done this. I love it. I learned. These are my lessons. You know, and these are my paintings. They speak about this because I went through this, and this is. You know, this is me, but it took yeah. me a while and, and it's only now that it's like that. So, so I do love it. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Jake, do you want to pull up some, um, some pieces, maybe pull up the entire collection? Yeah. We could <laughs> yeah, go to some sure specifics. And is that you in your studio? That's me. I That's love I love seeing your your work behind you. It's really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Is that where you predominantly do your work? Yes, I have a studio in the basement of my home. 
Um, and it's just my studio. Nobody else uses it. It's it's brilliant. Nice. And it, yeah, it's 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 great. It's the biggest comfort. You know, you have it at your home, but you don't see it, so it's not mm -hmm. like in your room. But it's close. Yeah. I have to commute to go to it. That's great. Yes. Um, so I would love to have you um, pick a piece, and then we could discuss it. And then um, I do have one piece that I want to. Uh, go on, go you. on then. I'm interested to see. Okay, great. Jake, can you scroll down? Right there on the right, up a little bit. This? Yeah. Oh, okay. This this piece catches my eye. Um, you can tell it's, I believe, one individual, but shown differently, or maybe it's two. Um, but I want to hear a little bit more about um, the themes in it, um, what you're trying to express, and you can tell there's a lot of a there's a lot of emotion in it, um, which I really like. So, mm -hmm. so um, I've been interested in uh, family photos from from ages ago uh, because people weren't used to um, obviously taking selfies and taking photos with your phones. Uh, it was very rare occasions when the family photos were taken. They were all staged. They were all like sitting together and posing. It was almost like a celebration. Oh, this is the day when we are taking the, the photo. And I love how this, these people look at these photos. Like they are always like the hair down, wearing, uh, hair done and the uh, dresses and everything. It's a whole celebration. And then everyone either has this kind of photos or we've all seen them because they are bad quality sometimes these people all look the same um mm. and i loved taking parts of that that photos and showing them as as a person that we sort of see we can recognize it's a woman but we don't know who exactly is that it can be your aunt and my aunt and my grandma and um, the reason why they are so uh, staged next to each other it's i've been thinking you know right now when we have memories when we have souvenirs um we don't only cherish them as a physical things we usually take a photo of them with our smartphones you know it's like oh okay this is cool i have it but i also need a photo of that and they're all cropped because there is a hand or something else on the background so everything is cropped and and, and it is like a a memory of these people uh, that used to celebrate photos, that used to celebrate these moments uh, shown as a memory. And this red thing that comes, it, you know, when I was taking the photo of a photo, um, this was a part of a dress that one of these ladies were wearing that just came out because the colors were wrong and it was badly edited. And I just thought it was really cool, you know, when you take a photo of a photo, of an old photo, so memory of a memory, um, and then because of this um, digital um, process, uh, while the, the time goes on and we use different things, the certain aspects of the photo stand out. And in this case, that was a dress, which I wouldn't think, you know, it will be a dress that will stand out years after the photo was taken. Yeah. And what is what does the red signify? Um, for the actual uh, photo, for for hmm, there is no uh, significant meaning uh, for the history other than this part of the dress uh, through the process of retaking the photos and editing and printing it off changed color to red somehow. I see. So so it is like this is also what. You know, there's a lot of colors that go into this one color that the photo ends up with. And how come is it's red? It's the strong. Yeah, it's almost one. like reborn oh. into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Jake, do you have a piece that you want to bring up? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I really like this one. I mean, it just caught my eye aesthetically, but um, you know, I just kind of want to hear more about the process in creating this and also how you come up with the names for these. I mean, this one seems somewhat self-explanatory, but just in general. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have a thing for carpets. I have a thing for... I love carpets. And um, I don't know... We used to do that in Poland. We put carpets on the walls as a decoration. And I remember my grandma used to have loads of them with the deers and horses. And then um, later, obviously, we all thought it's really kitsch and it's a horrible thing that only old ladies have in their homes. Uh, and and I and I really I really miss it. I really miss it, and it's very nostalgic. And I've been looking for carpets. Mm. And there's a lot of people that sell this kind of souvenirs from the past, the relics, um, online. And I love how they present it. They just present it as if it's nothing. It's just a carpet, like an old carpet that uh, everyone had in their homes, but now nobody cares about it. So they like it looks folded, or it's it, it, it I don't know, it's under the table, so you can't even see it, and they just post the photo, okay, you can even have it for free if you want. And I love that, how this thing that used to mean so much, or used to be a part of so many moments in the family, and used to be someone's in someone's home, right now means nothing, and it's taken completely out of the context, is put online, uh, let's say, I don't know, on Amazon or whatever, for sale, or or people are just posting it, oh, just take it because I don't need it anymore. And it's based on a photo, and you can't even see fully what the carpet is like. I just, I just loved it. Well, I know what it's like because I've seen it before. Um, but just this this curve and this fold is very very meaningful for me. It's peaceful in a sense. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah, that's true. And speaking about the the titles, I don't overthink it that they just come. They just come at the end, you know. It it, it just comes to me. Yeah. And when you when you work, do you find yourself working where you, in a very short time period or in a set time period, create several pieces or? Do you, pieces you come back to and further develop and put down for a while, or um, you will focus on one piece at a time? What is what is your process? Yeah, so <laughs> that's another great question. And I am wholeheartedly jealous of artists that can work on a piece, then come back to it, because I am insanely impatient, insanely <laughs> impatient and um, impulsive and for me everything has to be instant it just has to work if it doesn't work it's painted over I hate it I I cannot simply just leave it for a while which was the advice given to me in art school one of many that I ignored Uh, and then all I have is the photo and I think oh that was great but it's no longer here because obviously I'm impatient so so I have these ideas and I have this series going on in my head and I have these prints that I would like to work on and I just work and it either works or it doesn't, but I'm the one who decides it and it's simply the time factor. If the painting takes too long, I just lose my patience with it and it's gone, which is a horrible thing, but I don't fight it anymore. It's, it's part of who I am as an artist, so I wish it was different. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think that that's interesting. I mean, the norm is not always um, acceptable. I think it's interesting to see the different. And um, it's one of these things, yeah. you know, when you when you when they tell you in art school like what to do, and I took it very literally. If someone tells me you need to do this this way, then me being a good student, this is exactly what I'm gonna do. And if I think that this doesn't work for me and I want to do it differently I feel like okay so I'm doing something wrong this is this is bad I'm different this is not how it's supposed to be done and I think art is about things that are not supposed to be done so yeah. that that's that's another thing that took me a while so I just want to stress it if other artists think that please don't just do your own thing do your own absolutely. thing absolutely yeah that's, that's the beauty are, about art yeah yeah that's true I think that it's really hard to, um, I mean, art school is a really wonderful thing, but there's no really right or wrong way to create. 
if anything, you're a perfect example of that. Uh, that is true, and I... When you are changing from business school to art school, it is a... Well, I, I said it, you said it, it's a shift, yeah? But I went to art school as a business school girl, okay? That, that, that was the problem. I was like, okay, so, you know, I need to work, and if I, if I work, then I'll get a good grade. And if I work, I'll become better and nothing. There are no rules in art, you know. Yeah. And I couldn't understand like, okay, so I am working. I'm giving it my time. I'm having these tutorials with these tutors. Why am I not getting better? Why is my work not better? You know, and it, it doesn't really work this way. And I remember one tutor told me, oh, you know, it's not really a straight line. It's It's ups and downs constantly. And I felt like, no, no, I'm working, you know, I'm studying, yeah. my grades should be better. And that is a shift that, that everyone needs to make also. In art school, it's not any other school, you just, it, it comes with a different approach to what learning really is, whether yeah. grades are even, you know, um, needed or not. Have you found that that growth in terms of the shifting mindset of, like you said, you were a business student going to art school in that mindset. Once you kind of escape that and realize the hills and valleys um, of what it means to be an artist, was it freeing in a sense? What was the emotion behind that? Once you kind of experience and let go of that mindset. It was exactly how you called it, like, like depths and valleys. So at first I felt oh, okay, that's not going to work. This is too hard. So I was really down. I was like, oh no, I'm, this is out of control. You know, I'm losing control over everything. It's a chaos. It, and I become really depressed. And in that time, in that kind of darkness, I was looking for um, things to numb my mind which I think it's pretty clear everyone knows what that these are and I think it's a oh. it's a part of uh, a lot of artist journey so I got lost and I got scared because the control was taken away from me from my hands mm -hmm. and then the the valley <laughs> I saw the valley you know and and then I thought wow okay no it's not bad at all it's actually great it, it's it's yeah. freeing you know I am. I understand myself more. I understand the world that I'm operating in. You know, it's great. I actually can cope without the mind-numbing things. You know. Yeah. So it's up and downs. It's that's up. really nice to hear. Well, I think that's a great place to leave it off. Um, I'm so happy that our audience got to hear from you, Carolina. Um, I'm so happy of the time we got to spend with you today. Um, and thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for everything you're doing and for the platform you're creating. That's, that's really, it's really great. Thank you. I mean, you. It, it is so special to have artists from all over the world with so many different stories, such as yourself here with us. Um, mm -hmm. Apricus wouldn't be uh, what it is without you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yep. Goodbye. Okay,